Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, forecasters in California warned that a new round of widespread heavy rain would raise the threat of flooding. Still ahead, why experts say the death toll from storms is expected to rise in Southern California. Many of you are just now waking up. We have had some rain in the overnight hours. We didn't have it at my house, but I saw wet pavement on the freeway on my way into work this morning. So it happened. Good morning, everybody. And we made it to Friday. It is March 10th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I didn't get any rain as well, but like you on the way in, I saw wet streets. Wet streets, yeah. that's right. Mike joins us now, and there was a risk overnight for some strong to severe storms. Did we see any of that, Mike? Never really materialized. I mean, there were a few of them out there late yesterday afternoon into the evening okay. hours. Mia was keeping a close eye on it, but, you know, it just sort of fizzled on out. She had sent me a text early, early this morning, and it was like, yeah, nothing but crickets on radar right now. A couple of little showers. That was it as far as this front is concerned. If there's anything left over, there's nothing on radar right now. If there's anything left over, uh, yeah, it's not going to amount to a, really a hill of beans out there. Uh, as you can see, it is a little bit clearer as far as looking at the lights off there in the distance because we do have somewhat drier air that's moved on in in behind this front. We're still at 65 degrees, 50s in the hill country. So just looking at these numbers, it's kind of like what front, but Dew points have dropped down. They were up in the mid 60s yesterday. We're at 59 right now, 53 comfort. So it is a little more comfortable out there. And then we will continue to see somewhat cooler air. Or I guess I should say not as hot air coming on in here throughout the rest of the day. Oak is on the high side. Mold, hackberry, mulberry are low. So temperatures this morning, we will uh, stay basically steady, drop a few degrees here and there. If there's a leftover sprinkle, just kind of a, a mention of it. And then later on today, 72. That's it. We were 85 the past few days. This is normal, however, and most of the cloudy skies, northeasterly wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. This is not going to last long because at about 15 to that tomorrow, very hot humidity comes back in here, but then we have the next run coming in on Sunday, a little bit earlier as well. So that's affected temperatures on Sunday somewhat. So we're still looking at great weather going into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Safety versus convenience. That's the argument dividing neighbors in Northwest Bear County when it comes to traffic. Now county residents that cut through a Holotus Street could be fined. Alyssa Cole joins us live this morning to tell us how to avoid paying those fines. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Mark. Stephanie, people living in the Davis Ranch area use Beverly Hills Drive to get to FM 1560. But the city of Hilotes passed an ordinance banning through traffic on Beverly Hills Drive. Those caught doing so might see fines between $250 to $500. However, those who have used a shortcut in the past say having to go around adds nearly an hour to their commute. However, some agree with the ordinance. Traffic in San Antonio is bad enough, and now we're being limited on our roads that we can use. Just taking a walk in the neighborhood or walking their dogs. Uh, kids riding their bikes. Uh, that's not possible anymore with this amount of traffic. It's dangerous. Now the Hello to Mayor, he tells us the ordinance is for more than just safety. It's meant to preserve the street that isn't built for high volume traffic. Now Precinct 2 County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says legally the county that can't fight it, but he says he's looking into some alternative solutions and working with the city. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Alyssa. A man is fighting for his life this morning after San Antonio police say he was run over by a truck. This happened a little after 4.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon on Northwest 36th Street. That's on the west side of town, and that's where officers tell us they found the man in his 20s with a head wound. They say he may have had a broken jaw. Right now he's in the hospital in critical condition. So far, police say they have a suspect who is in a Ford F-150. A new emergency has been declared in parts of California, bracing for what could be a historic flooding event as a major storm system moves in. And as ABC's Andrew Denbert explains, California isn't alone preparing for another blast of winter weather. Heavy rain and high winds hammered California's central coast overnight, triggering mudslides and forcing road closures. Authorities near San Francisco say one person was injured after a tree fell on this Tesla. Up to eight more feet of snow could fall in the Sierra Nevada mountains, where homes and businesses were buried in recent storms. The California National Guard and CAL FIRE have been dropping hay to cattle down below who are stranded in the snow. And at this school, the gym's roof collapsed under all that weight. 
People are now rushing to clear their roofs before the storm adds more weight to the snow. Rain on top of snow can make it up to 10 times heavier, and some of the most significant accumulations in this region are expected for just these communities. It's why authorities are telling me there is major concern for flooding and additional roof collapses. In Southern California, the death toll is expected to rise after back-to-back -back blizzards devastated mountain communities east of Los Angeles. The San Bernardino Sheriff's Office now says at least 13 people have died since the first storm. Some of these people have been homebound for 11 days. They've run out of food. They, in some cases, don't have power. They don't have their own generators. The atmospheric river hitting California will move east into the weekend, threatening the Rockies, increasing the avalanche danger. In Utah, authorities say one person was killed and another injured in an avalanche yesterday. It comes as forecasters track a different storm system, bringing more than six inches of snow to the Chicago area, moving through Detroit and Cleveland today and into the northeast tonight. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A cybersecurity breach of D.C. HealthLink, the Congressional Member's Health Insurance Service, is much more extensive than just thought originally. The compromised data is said to include sensitive information like Social Security numbers, home addresses, as well as detail on Capitol Hill employees' health insurance plans. House and Senate staff members have been encouraged to freeze their family credit to guard against fraud and identity theft. D.C. HealthLink says it has started a comprehensive investigation of the incident and is working with law enforcement. The FBI is one of the lead agencies trying to find out how all the personal health data ended up on the dark web. China's Xi Jinping has been awarded an unprecedented third term as president. The National People's Congress avoided him by unanimous vote earlier today. In China, each presidential term is five years, so Xi is entering his 11th year in power. That makes him as the longest serving head of the communist China since founding in 1949. She was unanimously named chairman of the Central Military Commission. Right now, 437, 64 degrees. From the Spurs to high school hoops, there are a lot of basketball games going on today and tonight in the Alamo City. We're going to get a complete rundown next. Checking traffic authority. I see some flashing lights, 35 and Randolph, but it looks like it was over on the frontage road. We'll try to find out some more information for you. Let's look out there with live cam. A little different this morning, a little cooler. We're at 64 degrees, and we'll be checking in with Mike very soon to see how long the cool weather will stick around. Good morning and welcome back. Spurs took their 2022-2023 team photo at the AT&T Center before hosting the Nuggets tonight. Rookie Jeremy Sohan changed his hair to purple for the occasion. Blake Wesley, Devontae Graham, and Trey Jones, all sporting headbands. Every player was wearing the Red McCombs ribbon on their jerseys to honor the late Spurs founder. Shooting guard Devin Vassell is back after missing two months to recover from a left knee procedure. He had surgery January 11th and returned to the lineup March 2nd. Keldon Johnson was asked how their games complement each other. Me and Devin are pretty close, I feel like, um, and it just carries on to the court. I feel like um, he, he's a special talent. I mean, he gets to mid-range, he can shoot the ball, he can, he can do it all. You know, the little time we had together, we definitely enjoyed it, but um, we'll be back soon. You know, he's, he's getting healthy. Um, I'm happy to see him, you know, running around and things like that, seeing the progress. So I think that um, before you know it, we both be back on the court full, full power. It wasn't pretty, but the UTSA women's basketball team found a way to upset Rice to advance to the Conference USA semifinals. Roadrunners struggled in the first half and trailed 31-19 at halftime, but they regrouped during halftime, scored 15 points in the third and a season-high 28 in the fourth to come back and stun the Rice Owls 62-54. All year long, we've had close ones, whether it's close loss or a close win. Um, we've learned how to fight through, fight through for 40 minutes and just go possession by possession and just stick it out to the end. I really think we started moving the needle uh, somewhat. I mean, a month ago, you know, you could really tell that this team was gelling. But I think today they they found a, a version of themselves that I'm not sure they knew they had. UTSA will play number two seed Western Kentucky in the CUSA semifinals tonight at 7. Bernie Greyhounds will take on the Houston Washington Golden Eagles in the 4A state semifinals this afternoon at 3 p.m. at the Dome. This marks the Greyhounds' third straight trip to state and their sixth overall as a program. So what does Bernie need to do to advance to the 4A championship? 
we got to stick together. We got to play as a team. You know, we got to break their press. They're, they got some, some great athletes. So uh, we got to stay composed and stay true to ourselves and play our defense and get good shots on offense. Definitely stop number two. Uh, he's a pretty good shooter, pretty good player. Uh, Number 11's a, a big kid, so kind of taking them two out and making the rest of them win the game. They've got a couple of Division I players on the team, so it's a challenge, but you know, it's what you expect when you get to the state tournament. You know, you don't expect anything else, and uh, we're up for the challenge, and, and, and we're looking forward to it. And last but not least, Beaumont United will face Brennan tonight at 7 in the Class 6A state semifinals. And that's a look at Morning Sports. Pretty exciting yeah. of the night. Time now, 443 and 64 degrees for now. Coming up next, how new AI technology is being used to detect some cancers that may have been missed by doctors. In this morning's GMA First Look, using AI to detect breast cancer. It's really changed the paradigm. It's changed the value of the mammogram itself, and that's really exciting. While early detection is key, some estimates suggest screening mammograms miss about one in eight breast cancers. To reduce that number, doctors are now using AI called Computer Assisted Detection, or CAD, in more and more breast imaging centers across the U.S. The major advantage to AI right now is it speeds up the reading of the mammogram so that a radiologist can see more mammograms accurately over a certain period of time. And studies have shown that CAD can also find cancers that may have been missed by humans. And we'll have much more on what these AI developments could mean for women everywhere coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. From Yeti coolers to power banks that you may use to charge your phone, millions of products are getting recalled this morning. Well, on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has our recall roundup. Calico Critter toys are popular. Now more than 3 million are recalled after two children died. The toys are flocked animal figurines, but the bottle and pacifier accessories are choking dangers. They were sold at Walmart and Amazon. Families are urged to take the bottle and pacifier away from children and contact Epic Everlasting Play for replacements. Nearly 2 million Yeti coolers are recalled. The problem is the high-powered magnets used to close them. They can detach, and if a child swallows the magnets, they can be deadly. The recall involves the Hopper soft cooler and soft backpack and Sidekick dry gear case. They were sold at Dick's Sporting Goods Academy and more for the past five years. Contact Yeti for a refund. Electric blanket alert, 350,000 Bedshire electric blankets and pads are recalled after more than 100 reports of fire, melting, and people suffering serious burns. They were sold on Amazon last year. Get your money back. And if you use this power bank to charge your phone, tablet, or laptop, stop. 42,000 Anchor 535 power banks are recalled because they can overheat and start a fire. Look for the model number A1366. Lithium ion batteries shouldn't be thrown in the trash or the recycler. They're considered hazardous waste. You can contact the company to get your money back. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Look out there with Transguy looking at some of the shots around town. There's a look there at I-10 and now at Highway 281 at St. Mary's where things are pretty quiet and also at Highway 90 and I-35. But earlier we Why saw something. That was so busy there you, you, for I some mean, reason. Maybe people heading out of town. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, early we had an, uh, something pop up. I don't remember which camera it was. I, was it 35 somewhere? Anyway, there was a stall remember. at 35 in yes. Randolph. Yes. And that may have been it. A couple lanes were blocked, but it may have cleared just in it, the last couple of minutes. So probably. I don't, I don't see anything right now. Yeah. You know, when you're saying maybe busy, I wonder if people are getting to jump on heading out spring break because I know a lot oh, of folks yeah. have spring break next yeah. week. Yeah. Some had it this week. So that could be it. I mean, yeah. I noticed a ton of traffic this morning. So yeah. some schools, I mean, not ours. Oh, there you are, Mark. I-35 Randolph. OK, so okay. yeah, there. Yep. Okay. So that may be the uh, the stalled vehicle. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> I was that, just no, looking that, at the shot. Fine. I was like, there it is. A <laughs> constant theme of consciousness and thought here on GMSA. Uh, spring break weather next week is actually going to be pretty nice. It will be kind of cool if you are heading down maybe to the coast. Some of the mornings are going to be a little bit on the chilly side, but it's always kind of nice walking on the beach when it's kind of cool out there. And three days in a row now, Mr. McClellan has gotten some ducks to uh, 
help out with his pictures. I think he's either paying them or setting feet out there so he can get a good picture. <laughs> but uh, yeah, great shot there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And notice how, and I pointed out this, this out earlier, how these lights are a little bit brighter off in the distance there. We don't have the humidity hanging on in here quite as much as we've had the past couple of mornings. Here's the satellite picture going back 12 hours and things tried to get going uh, well up to the north as expected there. And then as this loops back on through, you blink, you miss it. There were a couple little sprinkles right about there that moved on through. That was pretty much the extent of it, even though there was that threat for even a couple of showers around here. Temperatures right now, 65 in town, mid 50s hill country. It has started to dry out though. We've got dew points below 60. That's always much more comfortable. We've actually dropped down about uh, five, 10 degrees as far as dew points are concerned. And so that's why it is a little more pleasant when you open up the door. Wind is out of the northeast, 10, 15 miles per hour, a little bit on the breezy side and uh, yeah, maybe a little leftover sprinkle around here this morning that just to take into account for that. But temperatures will stay fairly steady and then we will see more sunshine as the day goes on. But still plenty of clouds hanging on in here. Upper 60s at noon and 72 for a high temperature. Some uh, computers want to get us up into the mid 70s. Others keep us down in the 60s. I'm kind of splitting the difference here going at 72. And again, there's going to be plenty of clouds to not give us that much sunshine out there. Uh, as far as the drier air, it's not going to last all that long throughout the day today, so it's going to be very comfortable. But notice how this comes back on in here. Wind shift back around. More humidity moves in here, and it's going to be more humid tomorrow as well as much, much warmer tomorrow. As the moisture comes back in tomorrow morning, we'll probably have a little fog around the area. Today, nice day. Get outside, open up the windows, 69 degrees at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today, 72. Yep, that is normal. Now, flip right back into the 80s tomorrow at 15 degrees, make it in the upper 80s, more humidity, and we'll have some fog starting off tomorrow. Then the front's going to move through on Sunday. We'll still be at 80 on Sunday, but that front's moving through a little quicker. You know, if you think back to earlier this week, Sunday was going to be the really hot day, but now that's going to kind of put a lid on the heating, even though we'll still be at 80, but then down to 54, Monday 70, and look at that first half of the week. Normal temperatures, actually 65 on Tuesday. Going to be interesting to see what happens then on St. Patty's Day. Oh, yeah. Maybe as far as the there week. are some indications, not a week away, a much colder air, too. Huh. Another shot of really okay. cold stuff. So. Green sweaters. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Shivering so. shamrocks hey, get, for everyone. A week away, a lot can change between now and of then. Of course. But, uh, you know, just a little indication of it. Okay. Thank you, Mike. 452, 64 degrees. The new screen movie is set to scare up a bunch of cash at the box office this weekend. And up next, why it's the first screen without one of the franchise's biggest stars. Jimmy Kimmel gets ready for the Oscars, and Scream 6 is debuting without one of its biggest characters. For the latest of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Jimmy Kimmel's getting ready for his big night Sunday, hosting the Oscars for the third time, telling me what we can expect from him. I'll be wearing shorts. I will be um, eschewing the typical tuxedo, and I'll be in um, a pair of denim shorts. This is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. He was the host on the chaotic La La Land Moonlight fiasco, and then there was last year's Will Smith slap. I asked him if he likes those kinds of chaotic moments. Well, I'm not rooting for getting slapped, but it is fun when something weird happens. You know what kind of stuff I like? Streaking. I like when naked people run on the stage. I would like to see more of that. If that happens, you'll see it live Sunday night on ABC. This isn't like any other ghost face. In theaters, the new Scream movie is set to scare up a bunch of cash, but it's not without controversy. Scream 6 is the first Scream without Nev Campbell, who starred in the past five films. She exited after saying she wasn't being paid what she felt she was worth. Director Tyler Gillette says she's missed. Her presence is felt and will always be felt in this franchise, right? She's she's one of the most incredible characters that's ever been created, and we love, we love Nev, Nev dearly. Scream 6 is tracking to earn between 35 and $40 million in its debut, which was would be a franchise record. I've never been inside your apartment, house, I have no idea. Never met your daughter. Yeah, what is she like? She lives in Connecticut. You can set another appointment for Shrinking. The Apple TV comedy starring Jason Siegel and Harrison Ford has been renewed for a season two. And happy birthday to Carrie Underwood. The country superstar is 40 today, while Oscar-nominated actress Sharon Stone is 65. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Two things coming out of that. One, I, I heard Harrison Ford had to look up who Jason Siegel is. 
He wasn't super familiar with them. <laughs> Two, as far as the Oscars go, Mike brought this up. Somebody did streak during the Oscars, but it was way back in the 1970s. Oh, 74? Okay. Yeah, and so David, it, David Niven was up So there. it has happened before. But How Steph funny. and I were talking about the other day. Wouldn't it be interesting if the viewership for the Oscars went up this year because people aren't sure what's going to happen next after the Will Smith uh, slap last year. I think I think it will. Yeah, Just because people curious about it, how yeah, it's going to go. Yeah, yeah, because we used to think of the Golden Globes as kind of unpredictable, mm -hmm. and maybe that 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 kind of nuance has been brought to to this show as well. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be watching this time around. Yep, I'm going to be watching 457 again live right here on KSAT 12 Sunday night. 457, 64 degrees. The 2024 presidential race continues to take shape, and now there's word that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis could soon make it official. Just ahead, what he is planning as he heads to Iowa later today. And another arrest made connection to that deadly dog attack on the, in a west side San Antonio neighborhood. The charges a third person is now facing this morning. Let's look at the roads with TransGuy looking over at I-10 and Callahan East. I know earlier we had a stalled vehicle was off of Randolph and 35. And, but here's a shot at 35 at Alamo where things are okay. We're gonna be checking in with our RJ Marquez. Oh, there it is, I-35 at Randolph very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Two children involved in a crash overnight where the driver is suspected of driving while intoxicated. Just had the conditions of those involved in the crash. The race for the White House is getting more crowded this morning. Plus, new legal troubles for former President Trump. That's ahead. And let's look out there with live cam. Happy Friday, a cooler start to your morning. We're at 64 degrees and we're gonna check in with Mike to see if that will stick around as far as the cool temperatures. And good morning to you. Our studio is full this morning. Mike there, Alyssa over there, RJ standing by for traffic. We'll talk to everybody coming up in a moment. Good morning to you, it is Friday, March 10th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good weekend. You know, looking forward to that change today. Mike? Yes, it's going to be a fantastic Friday, and no, it won't stick around that long, just about a day. However, just wait, a couple of more days, we got another front moving on through here. So the front came through last night, and there were a couple of sprinkles around, but, you know, we were talking about how it was not going to be any any big deal, and rain was going to be nothing to be excited about, and that certainly uh, was the case. There's hardly anything out there, maybe a couple of damp roads. 64 degrees right now. That bottom number, though, has definitely dropped down. You see the dew points down to 57. Seven, almost 10 degrees lower than what it was yesterday. 78% humidity. We've got the wind coming in here out of the north to northeast. That's it for high temperature, but that is the normal high. 72 degrees later on this afternoon, and with some of that lower humidity, it's going to be a really comfortable day. Just kind of open up the windows. The aquifer dropped down four tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading, and oak went up on the high side. First time it's been on the high side. We're really starting to get into the oak season there. Little bits of everything else. All right, take a look at some of the temperatures around the area right now. We've got some. 50s in the hill country. We are still a good 10, 15 degrees above normal at 64 right now. 61 Ball Verde and again those 50s out in parts of the hill country. But these numbers do make a big difference. So let's see how it's still 66 right down there in Atascosa County for a dew point temperature. That's what we were at yesterday. But that drier air is continuing to push on in here. But again, that won't be sticking around that long this time around. We've got these winds coming in here out of the north, 10, 15 miles per hour. So a little bit cooler, not cold, a little bit cooler, less humid. Jacket's not a bad idea this morning. And then again, a normal cooler high temperature of 72. We'll still keep plenty of clouds around here today. It won't last long. Like I said, humidity comes right back in here overnight. We'll probably start off with some fog around the area tomorrow and then get up. 15 degrees higher, upper 80s tomorrow. Front comes through earlier in the day on Sunday. We're still going to be hot on Sunday, but then beautiful mid-March weather next week. Chilly mornings, great afternoons. We squeeze out any rain. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the man behind the wheel this morning. <laughs> in the pole position, RJ Marquez. There we go, Mike. Yeah, and happy Friday to everyone out there getting ready for spring break and maybe some people hitting the roads a little bit early today. Let's take you outside with TransGuide real quick. And as Stephanie mentioned, right before we went to break, we do still have this stall situation going on here in the northeast side on I-35 at Randolph Boulevard. Um, it's been going on for a little while, and let's take a look at how this looks as far as our traffic flow. And uh, again, traffic looking pretty good still in that area as crews have that off to the side on the shoulder lane there, but still 
something to kind of keep in mind. The southbound lanes of I-35, and this is uh, near O'Connor and Judson Roads. So if you're traveling on the northeast side, that's something to, to kind of take notice this morning as crews appear, hopefully to be taking care of that here pretty soon. Let's zoom out a little bit, take a look at our citywide map here, and traffic looking pretty good so far. Now, I did notice this down here on uh, Loop 410 and uh, on the southwest side and I just checked with Transguide and uh, TxDOT and it doesn't appear to be any sort of uh, sort of accident or crash being reported in that area right now but this is something that I'll continue to monitor throughout the rest of the morning. Wanted to mention real quick some bridge construction that's wrapping up right now. This is up on the northwest side 1604 um, at the La Cantera Parkway area and this is going to be going on throughout the weekend 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. So if you're going to be traveling through the La Cantera area, the UTSA area, the northwest side. Keep this in mind if you're headed out late at night. Going to be out early in the morning. One last look and again this stall taking place right now on I-35 at Randolph. Kind of the biggest thing that we're seeing at the moment. Mark and Stephanie back to you guys. Thank you RJ. New this morning a man is in San Antonio police custody accused of driving drunk in a crash involving two children. Police say it happened just after 10 last night in the 600 block of Hortensia Street on the west side near Meridell Avenue. Police say two vehicles collided in the intersection. One vehicle had a man and woman inside. The other had a man and two very young children in it. SAPD says the man with the children was detained on suspicion of DWI. No one was hurt in the crash. Another arrest has been made in connection to that deadly dog attack in a west side neighborhood. Alyssa Cole joins us in the studio this morning with the newest information. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning. We first reported on that San Antonio police had opened up an investigation into threats of intimidation of neighbors who witnessed the attack. Now we've learned a third person is in custody charged with retaliation. Take a look at your screen right now. This is 26 year old Destiny Cardona. According to Bear County court records, she was arrested for retaliation. That's a third degree felony. According to a police affidavit, the investigation involved a threat to a witness in the dog attack as well as criminal mischief. Destiny Cardona is now being held on a $25,000 bond. On February 24th, an elderly man was attacked by dogs on Depla Street and ultimately died. The dog's owners, 31-year-old Christian Alexander Moreno and his wife, Abilene Schneider, were arrested and charged with attack by dangerous dog resulting in death and injury to an elderly person. At last check, they are still in jail. Now we'll continue to bring you more information on this story as it becomes available. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Alyssa. A disabled veteran says his car was towed from a handicapped space and he called KSEP for help, but it looks like a change in state law may be to blame in this case. Patrick Winter's car was towed from a laundromat near Southeast Military Drive and Roosevelt Avenue on Wednesday night. He called police when he thought his car was stolen. Now, Winters later found out his car was towed, but he says the towing company did not give him a clear answer why. There's no excuse whatsoever to have a disabled veteran's vehicle pulled from beneath him, leaving him no way to get home. Now, KSET team here also tried calling and visiting Bear Cresswell's towing for answers, but we have not heard back. However, Winter's car may have been legally told because he did not have a handicap placard or plates. State law changed the parking rules for disabled veterans placed last year. However, the City of San Antonio Disability Access Office says an agency might be able to help Winters get his car back. This morning, new developments in the race for the White House. Sources say Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has made a decision on a White House run. And as ABC's Lindsay Watts explains, there are new indications former President Trump could be facing criminal charges. This morning, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has reportedly made up his mind about running for president. As he heads to Iowa today, sources tell ABC News DeSantis is privately telling allies he intends to launch a 2024 bid for the White House. And his team believes an announcement will come after the end of the Florida legislative session in May or June. The news comes as DeSantis' top Republican rival, former President Trump, faces new legal trouble. He's been invited to testify before a grand jury in New York, according to sources familiar with the matter. The grand jury is investigating Trump's role in the alleged hush money payment to Stormy Daniels before the 2016 presidential election. In New York, potential targets of investigations must be given the chance to testify, a strong indication that an indictment could soon follow. In a lengthy statement, Statement, Trump denied having an affair with Daniels and called the case a political witch hunt. 
President Biden, meanwhile, in battleground Pennsylvania, outlining his $6.8 trillion budget plan at a rally in Philadelphia. My plan is going to reduce the deficit by $3 trillion over 10 years. Also making headlines this morning, presidential hopeful Nikki Haley. At a town hall in Iowa, Haley said she wants to change the retirement age for Americans currently in their 20s and also limit Social Security and Medicare benefits for the wealthy. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington. 510, 63 degrees. Apple announces a new classical music streaming app. We're going to tell you when it launches and how many songs are included. Outside with live cam. Spring break is about to begin for a lot of folks watching right now. We'll talk to Mike Ostrange to get a preview of how things are looking as we go into this weekend and next week. Straight ahead. 513 Apple is launching a new classical music streaming app. Kind of cool. ABC's Liz Nagy has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple goes big into classical. It's launching a new classical music streaming app with over 5 million unique tracks and thousands of exclusive albums. Apple says users will be able to search by composer, work, and conductor. Apple Classical Music launches March 28th. Roku is making its own TVs available exclusively at Best Buy stores. The Roku branded TVs range from 24 to 75 and top out at $1,200. There's a basic line and a premium line, and of course, they each come with a voice-enabled Roku remote. Netflix is out with a new feature allowing users to customize the appearance of closed captions and subtitles. Text size can be small, medium, or large and includes three text style options. Users can also choose from several contrasting backgrounds to make the text easier to read. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Time now, 514 and 63 degrees for now. We had one little incident there. Stall vehicle 35 Randolph area. RJ is keeping an eye on that. And there's 35 at Olympia Parkway. Uh, 281 at Sprucewood and so far so good on the roads. Things still drying out after some overnight showers. We will check in with RJ and Mike coming up. I love my hardwood floors, but honestly, I didn't really know how to take care of them. That's until I found Swiffer Wet Jet Wood. It's specially made for wood floors with a microfiber-like pad that's really soft. And it sprays with a light mist that dries in half the time. That dirt and grime gets absorbed and locked away. The coolest part? It prevents streaks and haze better than my old mop. Yeah, this is definitely the way to go. Wet Jet Wood with a money-back guarantee. Also, try Sweeper Wood Cloths. When you find your reason to go on, let it pull you past the doubt, past the pain, and past your limits. No matter what, we go on. BioFreeze. Think mom's mad about her favorite shoes? Nope, because Bank of America lets her switch her choice cashback category to online shopping, so she earns more on a replacement pair. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. Welcome back, 518 on your Friday morning. Happy Friday. Uh, it looks pretty calm so far. Yeah, it looks pretty good out there. Obviously, people getting ready for spring break, probably going to be hitting the roads at some point later on today. So uh, things looking so good, or good so far, to say that, uh, as we take a look outside real quick with TransGuide traffic cameras, taking a look at throughout the city here and again things looking pretty solid in our area the biggest thing that we've been following throughout the morning has been this stall there on the northeast side and this would be right here at uh, Randolph Boulevard and I-35. So this is the southbound lanes of 35 and Randolph Boulevard, but uh, doesn't appear to be causing any major traffic issues at the moment. Traffic seems to be moving pretty smooth in that area as we've seen throughout the morning from our other TransGuide uh, camera shots and also from our maps right now. As we take another look outside, Loop 1604, Spurs Ranch, things looking pretty good. I-35 southbound at Main, things looking pretty good in that area as well. Another look here at 35 and again, people getting ready to head out spring break have a lot of plans just be careful if you're heading out onto the roadways and be cautious and again take your time if you're heading out to anywhere any long distances and uh, make sure to follow us on all of our traffic platforms as well to get the very latest information there mike how are things looking outside look at this picture boy that just kind of speaks for itself blue bonnets are everywhere in garden ridge that's a great shot it almost doesn't even look real does it that's so 
so mm -hmm. perfect out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. Seeing those blue bonnets, take pictures or any other um, pretty flowers and trees in bloom out there. Uh, satellite right now, or excuse me, satellite live cam, and we still have some clouds hanging around, but it's a clearer picture looking at the lights out there because we got much drier air. We've actually dropped down to 63 right now and mid 50s in parts of the hill country. We've got this wind coming in here out of the north, uh, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour, 17 there at Hondo and that's what's pulling in this drier air in behind the front that moved on through now temperatures then uh, later on this morning will be right around again mid 60s 50s in the hill country plenty of clouds hanging around we're going to keep a fair amount of clouds around throughout the day 69 today at noon and then a high temperature all the way up to 72 that's it compared to yesterday's 85 that's a normal high temperature and it's going to with the dry air out there and the lower humidity, I should say it's not bone dry air, but yeah, it's going to be just a really, really comfortable day. Now, as far as the humidity, which again has dropped down with these dew points down in the 50s, that will be the case all day long, most of the evening. But then notice how overnight humidity starts to come right back in here. We are going to be seeing a little bit of mist, maybe some fog around the area tomorrow as the moisture continues to pump back in here. So it's going to be a humid and very hot day tomorrow, 15 degrees warmer tomorrow than what it will be today. Sunday, we start off very warm and humid. Then the front moves on through here during the day on Sunday, and it's going to be coming through a little earlier on in the day. So yes, we will still be on the hot side, still almost 10 above normal, not as hot as tomorrow. And then we get some gorgeous, gorgeous air moving on in here. Here's what it looks like on the big picture of things. Huge storm system up there in the Great Lakes and moving off the East Coast. Another one coming in there in the Pacific Northwest. But notice how right now everything's moving almost straight west to east, kind of a zonal air pattern. You don't get many good storm systems around here for us with this type of configuration. So we've got beautiful weather today. We start to warm up somewhat tomorrow as well as Sunday. Then, even though it's not like a blast of cold air, we get this somewhat northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, which means we get some of that drier, cooler air coming on in here in behind a front. And that's going to be the situation for the first part of next week. It's going to be beautiful fall weather. Fall. <laughs> Beautiful March weather. Thank you very much. You know where my mind is. And that'll be the case the first half of the week. We warm up then by the mid to latter part of the week. But what's going to be interesting is this next big trough developing there. Boy, and that thing's really digging down. And there are some indications. And again, this is a long way off, still a week away, but that we'd get a very substantial front moving through here just in time for uh, St. Patty's Day next Friday. 69 degrees today at noon, most of the cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today is going to be up to 72, right where it should be this time of year. Tomorrow, fog in the morning, humid, hot, upper 80s, 80 on Sunday. Then that next front moves through, and we'll have, again, beautiful fall weather starting off next week. Why am I thinking fall already? Well, why why wouldn't you? I don't know. Because it feels different after yeah. the warm guess, week we I had guess this so. week. Yeah. So, but yeah, it'll be beautiful mid-March weather. <laughs> next, yeah. Nine, next nine week. out of ten people typically would say fall is their favorite season of the year. I so, think so, too. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you're, you for good. defending me here. You're, good. you're welcome. <laughs> of course. 523, 63 degrees. Coming up next, an adorable Texas toddler is lighting up the internet right now by sniffing candles to review them. Adorable. Can't wait to see it. All right, let's take a look at your lottery numbers this morning. Pick one, uh, three, one, four, one, fireball four. Daily four, nine, nine, zero, one, fireball six. Cash five, 19, 21, 22, 23, 30. And your Texas two-step, eight, 25, 29, 33, bonus ball, 32. Good luck. A two-year-old from Dallas is becoming a powerhouse in the candle industry. Everyone wants her stamp of approval. But as CNN's Jeannie Mose reports, she doesn't give it out lightly. Careful of that. She doesn't burn the candle at both ends. She sniffs it. Yucky, okay. She is to scented candles what Mikey was to cereal. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Move over, Mikey. Why are you like? <laughs> and this is Sunday. Sunday is a two-year-old Texas toddler who became famous on TikTok for her candle reviews. Her first was a nail biter. No. <laughs> you don't like that one? No. Like now, candle companies push to have their products reviewed by Sunday. Yes, yes. Good, all right. Thumbs up or thumbs down. No, no, not that. 
Even high-end designers aren't safe, says Sunday's mom. Uh, she's really hard on Tom Ford. Tom Ford got that dismissive head shake. No. no. Her two-year-old vocabulary can shave a candle down to size. No yuckies. No yuckies. No more that. This is a kid with tastes ranging from seaweed to sardines. I've never seen a two-year-old have the palate that this child has. Jimmy Kimmel had her on. This is the most powerful baby in the candle industry. <laughs> to rate Courtney Cox's candle line, three got the sniff of approval, but one... No. No, no. <laughs> Sorry, Courtney. Now Sunday hates to be parted. No. From her Jimmy Kimmel jacket. It's time to take the jacket off. No. Sunday's favorite smell isn't candles, it's coffee. Oh. Does that smell good? More that. More that. Some candles leave her conflicted. No. You don't like that one? Yes. You do like that one? Well, which is it? This two-year-old influencer now has someone repping her and is branching out into food, for instance, cookies and drinks. She even raided LA's airport on a recent trip. Do you like LAX? No. But when it comes to candles, she knows how to wax lyrical. No. No. No, no. Jeannie Mose, CNN. New York. <laughs> That's <She's> adorable. <laughs> fantastic. What else can we get her to review? I'd like to see some more airport reviews for I, sure. Well, I'm impressed with the, the seaweed, you know, at, mm -hmm. at this age mm -hmm. and um, also coffee. Yeah. Uh, usually, I mean, I don't know, the kids I know are just like coffee. Ew, you know. Yes, Mike. What about you? What's that? She can watch our show. No. Sure. sure you want that? Yeah, I was going to say watch her. I'm, no. I'm personally not sure if I want that. That's just me. 529, 63 degrees. Yet another trained derailment for the company already dealing the, with derailments in Ohio, this time in a wooded part of Alabama, just ahead what the company's CEO is telling a group of lawmakers about how he plans to fix the issues. Ahead on GMSA at 6, we're kicking off a new series. It's called Gardening with KSAT, what Sarah Costa is growing just outside our door in the new Case Hat Garden. Another setback for Norfolk Southern as another train derails, this time in the state of Alabama. How the company's CEO plans to try to stop this from happening again. And let's look out there with a live cam. Nice and cool this morning at 63 degrees, and I think it's going to stick around, but I'm going to check in with Mike, who is right next to me right now. We, yes, that's right. That's coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, March 10th, pre-spring bake vibes here in South Texas. So, yeah, happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. I know a lot of people are gearing up for spring break, and we'll be checking with you shortly because we felt like we already saw a crowd on the road early in the yeah, morning. Yeah, a little bit of that. Um, and speaking about spring break, uh, South by Southwest also starting up this that's weekend. That's right. So I-35 yeah. is going to be very busy. You're moving to Austin yeah. pretty much, uh, right? Well, for a couple of days. Okay. 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 So. Well, it's going to be hot this weekend, especially tomorrow for that because today, the nice weather we have right now with behind the front that'll stick around today, but that's it. It's going to be very short lived. However, we have the next front pretty much right on the heels. First of all, you look outside and it is a much crisper picture out there just because we've got much lower humidity. So we're not seeing all that fuzz around the lights this morning. 63 right now and dew point stands at 56. Now we're still a good 10, 12, 13 degrees above normal right now, but that number has dropped considerably from yesterday. It's about 10 degrees lower than what it was yesterday, thanks to those winds out of the north at nine miles per hour and that front that moved through overnight. There was the chance for some rain. We kept saying how it was not going to be a great chance of rain and that pretty much uh, played out as far as not much fell out there. 57 comfort burning stage, 68 still in Hondo, 61 Seguin. And again, dew points have dropped down throughout most of the area. It's going to continue to kind of push down here to the south, but it's not going to really go through the whole area as far as the drier air because the front that's moved on through is just kind of stopping down to the south and it's going to head back the other direction. More on that in just a minute. Wind is out of the north at about 10, 15 miles per hour. A lot of oak out there. Mold, hackberry, mulberry are on the low side and throughout the rest of today, 69 at noon. And then we're going to make it to 72 later on today. Plenty of clouds around here. Again, that is a normal high temperature. 
Not tomorrow, though, because we're going to be about 15 degrees warmer again. Very hot, very humid again tomorrow. And then the front moves through the next one on Sunday. That brings in some beautiful weather to start off next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. So, any crowds out there on the roads, RJ? Not at the moment, Mike. So, that is good news. And in fact, I just saw a tech stock go ahead and clear out uh, this stalled vehicle here on the northeast side at I 35 and Randolph. I mean, this was like real time, just within the past minute or so that they have officially cleared this out. So let's take a look here at our citywide map. And again, uh, our map's still showing this incident there. So that'll update here in just a little bit. But for the most part, a lot of green on our screen. So that is good news as traffic is moving along pretty well in our area. So if you need to get out and about th this morning, this would be a good time to do so if uh, you have to get somewhere by the uh, six o'clock hour. This would be good stuff. Uh, we were talking about spring break a little bit earlier. And uh, you know what? Some people may be trying to avoid all the action on I-35 and go up to 281 that's also one way to get a little bit north and uh, just keep in mind that there will be some intersection work that's going to be taking place uh, through the rest of today and this is going to be going on until 3 p.m. there are various lane closures on the frontage roads at Bilverde Road this is US 281 past 1604 so just kind of keep that in mind if you're headed out anywhere maybe maybe trying to get an early start to the weekend or an early start to spring break one more quick look here at trans guide going to give us a little bit of our rotating camera look here and let's see if we could get another shot here yeah here we have uh, 35 at olympia things looking pretty solid in this area and also 281 at sprucewood things is looking pretty smooth mark and stephanie back to you guys thank you rj this morning the national transportation safety board has another norfolk southern train derailment to deal with and as cnn's john lawrence reports it happened the same day that company ceo was grilled by u.s senators in connection to recent derailments in ohio Another setback for Norfolk Southern as a westbound train from Atlanta to Meridian, Mississippi, derailed in a wooded area in Calhoun County, Alabama, according to local emergency officials. Fortunately, um, there was no hazardous material with this. No injuries or road blockages were reported in Thursday's incident, according to local officials, but it comes on the heels of two recent derailments in Ohio, including one last month in East Palestine, when toxic materials contaminated the air, water, and soil. We're looking at all these incidents as we look at any incident that happens and figuring out how we can become an even safer railroad. Hours after the Alabama derailment, Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw testified in a Senate hearing vowing to fix the situation in East Palestine. Norfolk Southern will clean the site safely, thoroughly, and with urgency. You have my personal commitment. But at times, Shaw was met with skepticism. With all due respect, you sound like a politician here, Mr. Shaw. Some Ohio residents are also a little leery. Yeah, it's great that he wants to put millions into everything, but that's not going to change how people's health is. They, if the health is already ruined by this air and stuff. Unfortunately, that's not going to help. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In northern Germany, police say eight people were killed in a shooting at Jehovah's Witnesses Hall in Hamburg, apparently including the perpetrator. An unspecified number of others were wounded, some of them seriously. There's still no word on a possible motive for the shooting last night that stunned Germany's second largest city. Germany's chancellor, a former Hamburg mayor, described the shooting as a, quote, brutal act of violence, end quote. Police said during the night they believed that there was only one shooter. Alex Murdaugh is appealing his murder conviction for killing his wife and son. One of Murdaugh's attorneys tweeted about the appeal saying, quote, this is the next step in the legal process to fight for Alex's constitutional right to a fair trial, unquote. Last week, a South Carolina judge sentenced Murdaugh to life in prison for the shooting death of his wife, Maggie, and his son, Paul. Prosecutors argue that Murdaugh killed them to distract and delay investigations into his alleged financial crimes. The man who bought a $2 billion Powerball ticket is cashing in. According to the LA Times, Edwin Castro purchased this $25 million home in Hollywood Hills, California. It's a beauty. The 13,000 square foot home reportedly has five bedrooms, six baths, two powder rooms, along with a movie theater and a wine cellar. It also boasts an outdoor kitchen and an infinity pool with a great view. Castro bought the winning ticket at a gas station in California back in November. Wow, a nice investment there. Yeah, we rarely hear what uh, lotto winners do yeah. with their money, and now there's proof. It's nice to see it. <laughs> Time now, 539, 63 degrees for now. Just ahead, we'll tell you why grocery bills remain so high, even though the cost of food is down.
Let's look out there with live cam. For a lot of people, this is going to start spring break weekend, so cooler temps right now. It's kind of nice, but we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of the weekend coming up. And welcome back. It's 542 and your morning consumer headlines. Grocery bills remain high even though the cost of food is down. Food producers raised prices when their costs went up, but ingredient prices have been on a downswing for months. So why aren't they passing along the savings? Well, it may be because they have other expenses that remain higher, like labor and transportation. Critics say now that companies see that people will pay higher prices, they are in no rush to give up those profits and charge less. Now, between January of 2022 and January of 2023, grocery bills went up more than 11 percent. Visa, MasterCard and Discover announced they will pause a plan to implement a new merchant category code for the nation's gun retailers. Advocates argued this would help track suspicious transactions of firearms and ammo and could help flag potential mass shooters and gun traffickers. Previously, gun store sales were classified under a general merchandise or sporting goods category. GOP officials said adopting a new sales code for gun stores would harm the constitutional rights of gun owners and potentially violate consumer protection and antitrust laws. Under pressure, the companies have backed down. Time now, 543 and 63 degrees for now. And are you ready to have a new little friend? The precious pet is standing by to go home with you next. Outside with TransGuide right now, taking a look at 281 and Loop 410, and wow, we are skipping through these cameras. Uh, RJ Marquez is back with more on how your commute is going so far on your early Friday. Well, this one looks like it stepped in paint. I know. It's just, <laughs> it's so so, just like the just bottom half of its yeah. little paws are, are white right there. That's so it. It's Kim's so here cute. from the San Antonio Humane <laughs> Society. So who's been painting and who's the dog? So. <laughs> this is, <laughs> right, this is BB. Uh, BB is a three-month-old little terrier mix, a uh, super sweet dog. I have one kind of similar like this at home that I adopted. Um, just it's very loving. Definitely well, gonna want to play a lot. So oh yeah. yes, a little, little afraid right now at that. that yeah, kind of getting used to the cameras. Soft little puppy fur. Oh, it's so you, is it nap sweet. time for you? Yeah, I say it's it's my morning nap time, oh, Mr. Mike. Those eyes are getting heavy. Getting sleepy. Yeah. You keep doing that, and I'll oh, I'll fall asleep. Okay, here I'll just do this. <laughs> Kim talks real exactly. quietly, so what's going on? <laughs> so we need a lot of things from our Amazon wish list. We need puppy pads. It's coming up kitten season. So a lot of our formulas, our uh, nipples for the bottles, all of that stuff is on our Amazon wish list. It's the easiest, best way to donate. So if you take a look at that, um, we're also in need of dog treats. So you can do that, or you can come by the shelter and drop off your donations as well. Best thing, because again, they want the exact sizes yes. and everything specified. You don't have to shop exactly. around. Exactly. You how have many, to guess. How many any clicks of it. does it take? Open it up the like web two. page. Two, two and clicks, and you're done. It's on Put it in your Amazon card, and, mm -hmm. and off it goes. Okay. And it comes directly thing, to you us. Don't forget about uh, fostering and volunteering yes. over there. Yes, you can definitely use need that. Some of that. So, if you'd like more information about all that, <laughs> especially this little baby here after morning nap time, <laughs> San Antonio Humane Society, sahumane.org. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Man, BB, definitely a cutie there. I always like when the paw has just that little different color. That's a yeah. big... Yeah. <laughs> like they're, yeah, the green socks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, guys, taking a look outside, trans guy traffic cameras, and things looking pretty good right now. For your Friday morning commute, Loop 410 at Starcrest, things looking good there. Traffic moving along very smooth in our area right now, as uh, maybe there's already some people on spring break. Got a little bit of an early start, so that's good. Good for you if you're getting an early start to the week ahead here. Again, Again, things looking pretty solid right now out on our roadways at citywide map. It's going to confirm pretty much the same here as uh, many of our areas, especially some of the busier traffic areas. Things seem to be going pretty well in those areas. We do have a uh, reported stall here on the south side, and this is Loop 410. This is the eastbound lanes at Roosevelt Avenue. So something to keep in mind if you're headed there again, Loop 410 eastbound at Roosevelt Avenue for people and our drivers out there on the south side. But one more quick look at our TransGuide traffic cameras and all good out there, guys, on the roads um, on your Friday morning. Yeah, 35 at Thousand Oaks, things looking pretty good. I have a question for you guys. Okay. This goes right into yep. Mike. True or false, there are rainbow colored blue bonnets in Texas. Uh, true, I think true. False. 
Oh, Whoa. false. Yes. A couple of years ago, somebody true. tried somebody, to tell us that. Well, somebody sent a yeah. picture. Somebody sent us a picture, like and then picture. We, we looked into it. We even got Dylan Collier involved. We didn't. No. <laughs> um, and it turns out the image was completely fake. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. But I paused, yeah, I I paused for a now. minute because I thought you meant rainbow colored, like different colored, but actually rainbow Rain, colored. No, yeah, multiple. No. I mean, and there are one or two color right. mm -hmm. okay i mean there are probably three or two yeah. or three or four colors but not rainbow but wouldn't that be pretty you're looking at the wrong person talking about plants man yeah. I'm, I'm, i know I'm, me too <laughs> me too Here, here's a all i know is <laughs> a pretty a picture like this and there's there's a couple colors right there yeah, yeah we've got some blue bonnets in there and then those lavender Gewurztraminers or whatever they are. I have no idea. I'm um, with you, Mike. <laughs> lavender pretty flowers so and the red pretty flower there so I kind of make up names sometimes as I go along, but uh, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got a uh, really nice view out there by the airport. Plenty of clouds. We're going to keep a lot of clouds around today. 63 in town. Light jacket's a good idea if you are heading out early this morning. 50s hill country, and we've got this breeze coming in here out of the northeast. About 10, close to 15 miles per hour, 17 mile per hour winds there at Hondo. Much drier air has been pumped on in, and temperatures are going to be right about where they are right now. Cloud cover is kind of helping us from getting much cooler than where we are right now. And we'll uh, kind of fluctuate a few notches here and there over the next couple of hours, make it up to 69 then at noon. Some sunshine is going to start to squeeze on through. But again, I think we keep a fair amount of clouds around here today, 72 for a high temperature then. And uh, going into the next few days, we've got lower humidity right now, but the humidity is going to be coming back up overnight and tomorrow morning. So we're going to be starting off with some fog around the area, maybe even a little bit of mist. That'll be the case starting off on Sunday as well. But then the humidity drops off substantially on Sunday. A much more potent front is going to be moving on through here. And not only is that going to bring in much drier air, but also significantly cooler air is going to be coming on in here next week. I mean, once again, this is a tale of two air masses, basically single digits up there in Cutbank, teens, Bismarck, and then we're at the 60s right now. But look at that. Dallas is at 48 degrees. And as far as the next few days, we're kind of going to go all over the place. 72 today, 87 tomorrow, 80 on Sunday. Front moves through. And then look at this. We've got temperatures, a nice little stretch that's going to be at or below normal. Quick peak on Thursday. But then even in behind that, I notice how low temperatures will be down right about normal. Uh, Friday it's going to be interesting. There's still some long range computer models that want to get uh, another shot of pretty cold air coming in here by the late next week. Now that's still a week away, so you can't, you know, write that in stone as of yet. 69 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature today makes it up to 72. Again, fair amount of clouds hanging around here today. And then tomorrow warms back up, back to, with the humidity around here, 87 degrees and 80 on Sunday. The front moves through a little earlier on in the day, so the wind's gonna shift back around, we'll drop the humidity, and then beautiful mid-March weather for the first part of next week. You've got that look on your face. I, I think somebody explained what I, the flower is. I found it. So the, the rainbow blue bonnet, it was an article somebody put out in 2017 online, and it was an April Fool's joke. Oh. Yes, and it just kept rolling on through the last couple of <laughs> I thought years. you were going to say somebody wrote in and told us what that purple flower was. Mm -mm. Uh, not yet. Not yet. So that, yet. that could okay. still happen. That's, yeah, that's coming up. Yeah, not a flowering gewurz Uh it, I don't know. It could be, uh, I don't know. I can't make them up as good <laughs> a, as you a, can. A pretty purple flower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 552, 62 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to check out some new video game experiences from a classic sci-fi franchise to a game that's let you manage hotel renovations. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we begin with the weather because there is just so much of it, not just California, but Nevada up to Washington State, over to Minnesota and here in the Northeast, New York, Pennsylvania, all with winter weather advisories. We'll track all of it and tell you what to expect. Also, it is the final countdown to the Oscars. Lara in Hollywood going behind the scenes with the producers, breaking down what to expect from the big show. You don't want to miss that and so much more right here on GMA. Kill, triple kill, overkill, kill tacular. The new season of Halo Infinite is underway. The first person shooter gets upgrades with new gear, weapons, a new play mode, a trio of new maps, and a 100 tier battle pass for gamers to conquer. Attention all qualified customers of the colonies. 
Spacer's Choice has a very important question. Space-based RPG The Outer Worlds has a new version available now. The Spacer's Choice edition improves the graphics, raises the level cap, and brings all of the game's downloadable expansions into a single experience. This room hasn't been refreshed in decades, but you are here to change that. And for something a little more down-to-earth, okay, very down-to-earth, there is Hotel Renovator. As the name implies, players renovate hotels from the comfort of their computer. The game is available now via Steam. Requesting a late checkout in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA, a San Antonio disabled veteran left stranded for hours after his vehicle vanished outside a business on the south side. How he was able to find it with help from police. Plus, spring is here, and that means a new opportunity to plant with success. Sarah Costa kicks off our new series, Gardening with KSAT, with some new work up in the KSAT garden in our front yard. And up next, if you're making some last-minute spring break plans, we've got some travel inside knowledge to help you find that perfect last-minute getaway. And checking Transguide, we're noticing more traffic this morning. People are trying to get a jump start either on the last day of the work week or perhaps spring break. We'll talk to RJ and Mike and get an update on your forecast coming up.